Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Chapter 14 in Genesis, in Bereshus, the fourth portion of Lech Lecha. Today we read about the world war. Let's give a little bit of an introduction. We're about to learn about what is called in the Chumash, the war of the four kings against the five kings. And I remember as a kid, learning this and not understanding. How is it possible that it's a fair fight? If you have four kings against five kings, the five kings are going to win. Because it's five to four. Five kings come with five countries. They come with five armies. This is four kings. But it's not at all like that. Because the word king is a, is a word. Who are we talking about? The four kings were four powerful kings from four powerful countries. You talk about countries which today would be Iraq and Iran and all of the surrounding countries, Babylon, Mesopotamia, those are the areas we're talking about. Those are the kings who went and attacked the world, conquered the world. They then made their way to the closer to Israel. They came through the north. They conquered what we call today Syria, made their way down to Lebanon, and subjugated everyone, taxed them, made their way into Israel proper, went from north to south, and conquered one community after another, levy taxes. And then they came to the Fertile Crest. Then they came to the most powerful economic center at that time, which were the cities of Sodom, Amora, Admo, Tzvoim, and Bela or Tsoar, that was a powerful economic center. Every one of those cities had what we might call today a mayor. I mean, imagine if Iraq and Iran and Pakistan and Afghanistan and Tajikistan declare war against Beverly Hills, you know, and, 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 and the city of commerce, <laughs> and Pacoima and Burbank, you know, and Woodland Hills. That's what we're talking about. The, 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 the five kings were mayors of little Shtetlach. I don't know if they had a police force, let alone an army. I mean, obviously they had a police force because they abused people and tormented people. But this was not an army to speak of. That's who the five kings were. They were the kings, the leaders, the rulers of the five cities of Sodom and Amora. The four kings were... A, 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 an invasion of mega superpowers. That's the story behind the story. Or as Paul Harvey says, the rest of the story. By he and it came to pass, be may in the days of Amrofel Melech Shinar. The first of the four kings was a guy by the name of Amrofel, and he was the king of Shinar. And Rashi will say that Amrofel is the same as Nimrod. Nimrod is descendant son of, uh, of, of Cush, of Chom, and he was the king who threw Abraham into the furnace. Aryeich Melech Elosor, Kidor Oimer Melech Elom, and Sido Melech Goyim. Those are the four kings of the four countries. So the kings are Amrophel, Aryeich, Kedor Omer and Sido. The countries are Shinor, Elosor, Elom, and Goyim. Rashi, Amrofel, says Rashi, who? Nimrod. Amrofel is one of the same as Nimrod. Sha'omar Lavrom, why was he called Amrofel if his name was Nimrod? Because that's a name that he took on since he said to Abraham, Peil Leteich Kivshon Ha'esh. When he told Abraham, fall into the fiery furnace. He told Abraham, fall into the gap. So he forced Abraham into the furnace. That's when he was called Amrophel 
because although he forced Abraham into the fiery furnace, Abraham survived. Melech Goyim, so Rashi says, don't think that Goyim means the king of nations, even though Goyim means nations. But Mokim Yeshesh Me Goyim. Goyim is a country. Al Shem Shinis Kapsu Shoma Mikama Umeis Umekim is because that country called Goyim was an amalgamation of many different cultures. Vimlichu Ishalayim and they coronated a king upon them, crowned a king. Ushmei Tido, his name was Sido. There is a Balaturim here. The Balaturim says, Vayehi bimei, this is actually based on a Gemara, where it says that wherever it says, Vayehi bimei, it's vai, it's tough times, oi vai. First the Gemara says, Vayehi, and then it says that that's impossible, there are too many Vayehis, and not every one of them are tough times. Then it qualifies and says, Vayehi bimei. So you have Vayhibi Mei Shvot Hashoftim, the story with uh, the, the story with uh, Rus and Naomi and the death of uh, Elimelech and so on. Vayhibi Mei Achashverosh. She goes on to enumerate the five different Vayhibi Meis that they were all difficult times. This was, of course, a very difficult time. What was the difficulty of this time? There was a world war going on. This was not a good time. It was a massive invasion in what we would call today Israel. Now, what's interesting, what's interesting about this war is that usually in a war, we like to say, these are the good guys and these are the bad guys. Here we can say, these are the bad guys and these are the bad guys. A little bit like some of the wars that go on today, you know. The Jews wouldn't do too well on either side. <laughs> Verse 2. Osu milchama. So these four kings invaded and made war. Now remember, they made war against everyone. But here we're talking about where we are right now. Es bera melech sedom. They came up against Bera, king of Sdom. Vies Birsha, Melech Amora. Shinov, Melech Admo. Shem Ever, Melech Tzvoyim. O Melech Bela, the king of Bela, which is the same as Tzoar. That's the fifth of the five Sodomite cities. Rashi tells us that these names of these kings describe the viciousness and the evil perpetrated by these kings. The first one is Bera. Says Rashi from the oral law, Bera is like Bet-Ra. Two levels of evil. Doubly evil. Doubly wicked. ra la shamayim ra la Bera was not only evil to God in spiritual matters. He not only waged war against God, but he also waged war against people. He was a tyrant. He was tyrannical. Birsha, again, is Bez Rosha. He was doubly wicked, but he was worse than Bera. They, they tell a cute story that uh, there was this terrible, terrible person. He, 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 he was awful. They come to a rabbi and they say, Rabbi, you got to do his eulogy. And the, the family members who were powerful and wealthy says, Rabbi, I know there's nothing good you can say about this guy, but I will give you a hefty sum of money if you say one good thing about him. And what is the rabbi going to do? Anyway, he finally gets up there and he says, let me tell you something about this guy. His brother was a lot worse than he was. <laughs> that, that, that's the good thing we can say about Bera, is that Birsha was worse than him. Shenis Allah Boresha, he was worse then the other guy, Shinov, says Rashi, is Sone Oviv Shabashamayim. He hates his father in heaven. Shem Ever, Som Ever. He placed wings upon himself, so to speak, figuratively speaking. Imagery: Lauft to fly, Velikpeitz and to leap, Velimredin to rebel. Ba Kodesh Baruch 
And Bela is the name of the city. Actually, there's an interesting talk that the Rebbe gave on this Rashi. And the Rebbe explains that Bera is Bezra. That Bera was wicked not only to God, but to people. Birsha was worse than him. Bez Rosha. He was evil in God's eyes and in people's eyes, which means he was sadistic, he was cruel. He, 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 he terrorized the population. Shinov and Shem Ever were just rebellious against God, but they weren't as cruel to the people. And uh, the king of Bela, Tsoar, he was the new guy on the block. That was the newest of the five kingdoms, cities. So the Rebbe explains that's why when we talk about later that the wrath, the anger, the cries, the pain of Sodom and Gomorrah reached God's ears, it doesn't say the pain of Sodom and Amorah and Adma and Soyim because when we talk about cruelty to people, it was Sodom and Amorah. It was Bera and Birsha. That's a talk of the Rebbe. Verse 3 Kol Eilech all of these came together as a group, El Emek Hasidim, to the valley of Sidim, Hu Yam HaMelech, that is today the Dead Sea. Why? Because when Sodom and Gomorrah and the whole plain was destroyed with sulfur and chemicals, it became a Dead Sea. But prior to that, it was the Fertile Crest. Emek Hasidim... By the way, this has nothing to do with the Hasidim today. Kachshmei, that's what it was called. Why Sidim? Because it had many fields. Sadeh, Sidim. Huyam HaMelech, Lachar Zman, after a while, Nimshachayam Latecha, the sea was drawn into it. Venasa Yam HaMelech, and together with the chemicals of the destruction and devastation of Sodom and Gomorrah, it became the Dead Sea. That the rocks burst round it and rivers were conducted into it. Anyway, the story of the war is, verse 4, There were 12 years that these five kings of Sodom and Gomorrah served Kedor Omer. So they were subservient, they paid taxes, they did what they had to do as long as they could thrive. But then, for 13 years, they decided, we've had enough. No uh, taxation without representation, and they made a Boston Tea Party. They revolted. So there was the war. They said, we're not taking it anymore, and there was a rebellion. So the cities of Sod Sodom and Amorah and Adma and Sloim and Bela declared war against the occupying Forces of the four kings. That's the story here. Okay. Then what happened? Verse 5. But then came the 14th year. Along comes Kedor Loimer, who was the number one warrior. Ramalochim Asherite, along with his other three allies. And they started getting serious. Yaku and they smote as Refoyim Bashtaris Karnoim, as Hazuzim Bahom, be so Amy Bishobi Kiryosayim. And as we look at maps, because there are different Chomoshim that have maps, it shows them coming down from north to south, cleaning up the rebellion in Israel, in Syria, in Lebanon, Israel coming down the pipe. Five of Abbas Rishon Alimirdan of their rebellion. So there was a 13 year rebellion. This was the year 14 of the 13 year rebellion, following the 12 years when they pay taxes like good boys. So it's a 25, 26 year story. Along comes Kedar Laimer. Rashi's question is wait a minute. Kedar Laimer was king number three, enumerated in verse one. All of a sudden, he's number one. Because he was the guy. He was the main warrior here. He's in the thick of it. The other three were his allies. They are the same as the Zamzumim mentioned in Devorim. 
Baharadam Bahar verse 6. That's Hachori, Baharadam Seir. When we talk about Esav and Seir, we talk about the natives or the Chorites, Asher al Midbar, which is by the wilderness. So the four kings went and just overrode and, 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 and quieted down, squashed the rebellion in all those communities. It's the plain of Poron El Shmei. It's called El. And the plain of Mamre is called Eloine. And the plain The Targum translates them, them all plain. And each one has his name. The question is whether these are words that mean plain or these are names of plain. Like the fruited plain. Al Hamidbar, Eitzel Hamidbar, near the desert, Kameva Olav, Mate Menashe, which means near. Verse 7. Vayashuvu, and they turned back. Vayavoyo, Lai Mishpat, he Kodesh, and they came to Ain Mishpat, which is Kodesh. Vayako, and they smote as Kos Deo Amaleki, the whole field of Amalek. Vigam, as Hamiri, Ayeshev, Hatson Tomor. And also the Amorites who are living in Chatzon Tomer. So that in an organized fashion, city by city, community by community, county by county, they just devastated the entire area, which we know today as Israel. Nobody was able to stand up in front of these, before these fierce warriors. Ein Mishpat hi Kodesh al Shema Osid. When Rashi says that Ein Mishpat is Kodesh, it's futuristic. The Kodesh that we talk about by the exodus of Egypt, this is Ein Mishpat. Shasid When there was the well, talk to the well, hit the well, and all of that, this is the well when Moshe and Aaron were judged and God's name was sanctified. That's the Kodesh. The waters of strife, where the people would gather for all types of judgment. This was the courthouse uh, area. What does it mean, the field of Amalek? <laughs> Do you know who Amalek is? Amalek is Esav's grandson. Esav uh, is futuristic. Why are we talking about Amalek? He says, the Torah is written with references to future. It says that the entire Torah up to the point of Mount Sinai was written at the foot of Mount Sinai. So when, the Torah, when this portion was written, good morning, it could be written from this perspective futuristically. This is today's En Gedi, like the goats of En Gedi. It's a full verse in, in Chronicles in Yeshaphat. Okay, so this is the picture. Now again, bear in mind that the five cities of Sodom and Gomorrah were very powerful economic centers, and there was a lot of money there. And so this was about money. In the end, most wars are about money. I, I, I said a blessing before the class, so I didn't make a bro. Okay. So now we're told in 8, by say Melech Sdom. And there came forth the king of Sdom, Umelech Amora, the king of Amora. Umelech Adma, Umelech Tzvay, Umelech Bela Hitzoar. They said, we're not going to take it anymore. And they, these five kings from these five shtetalach, went and waged war against these invasive armies. Who did they wage war with? Who did the five kings of the five cities wage war with? Nine. With the four invading kings. Who were? Kedar Omer, king of Elam. Sido Melech Goyim, Amrofel Melech Shinor, Aryech Melech Halosar, and this became known as the famous world war of Arba Melochim Esachamisha, the four kings against the five kings. Arba Melochim Viafalpikain, despite the fact that it was four against five, Notzchu Hamuotim, the minority, the four one. How could it be that four kings could beat five kings? to tell you, they were powerful. So you had this army, this was a mega army. This were, these were the invading superpowers, invading superpowers. So how does Avraham, why, do we know, why are we reading this story? 
This is not a history book about world wars because we're talking about how Lot was kidnapped by these guys because he became a resident of Sodom and Gomorrah. And Abraham went to save Lot. And Abraham beat these guys down and he became the victor. This is why we're reading all of this. Abraham is pretty cool that he had the courage to stand up against these armies. Abraham Avinu did not hesitate to pursue these powerful armies because Avraham Avinu believed in the supernatural blessing of Hashem. Verse 10. Meanwhile, good morning, back at the ranch, the Amek Hasidim, the valley of Sidim, which was the valley of these fields, along Ventura Boulevard, Be'eres, Be'eres, Chemer. There were lots of slime pits, like the La Brea tar pits. There were lots of pits. Now, Vayanusu Melech Stom Bamora, as the kings of Stom and Amora were moving backwards, running in panic, by Yiplushom, they fell into the pit. And this was like quicksand. You know, it's like this guy says, help me, help me. I'm up to my ankles in quicksand. The guy says, that's not so bad, it's only your ankles. He says, but I fell in head first. So that's pretty serious. So the kings of Stom and Amor, they fell in head first. And those that remained, head or nosu, they ran for the hills. That's the expression, run for the hills. They should make a movie out of this. There were many pits. Where they took earth, for building materials. This was a natural source of building Pit uh, slime. Medr Shagod, the Medr says, Shoyatit Mugubahem, that there was actually soft, muddy uh, pits, like quicksand, Venas and Nes, Lamelech's name, and there was a great miracle that happened that the king of stone survived it, because no one can survive this. You fall in, you're gone. Shoyatza Misham. Why did the king of stone, who was very far from a good guy, why did he merit a miracle? Because there were members of the nations of the world at that time who discredited the whole story. The story was going around that Abraham was saved from the fiery furnace of Nimrod. They said, yeah, sure. Don't tell me any stories. Nobody can be thrown into a furnace and be saved. Must be trick photography. When they saw the king of Sodom survive the pits, they began to believe that sometimes supernatural phenomenon can occur. So that Hashem introduced this to the world to give miracles credibility. Hora, or Hera Nosu, Lahar Nosu, they ran to the mountains. Hera Kamil, Lahar, to the mountain. And here Rashi gives us a quick grammar lesson. Any word that needs a lamed in the beginning, like lehor, to the mountain, you can say hera, which is like lehor. There's a difference between hera and hohora. Because the hey at the end replaces the lamed in the beginning. But it doesn't stand in the place of the lamed with a patach. But a hera come lehar, a come elhar. Doesn't say which mountain. Each one ran to the mountain that he found first. When it says, hey, it means the known mountain. Okay. So what happened is that the four kings just, they, they devastated the five kings. So that Sodom and Gomorrah is no more. They're now occupied territories. Ba'ikhu and the four invading kings took as called Achus Dom Ba'amora all of the wealth of Sodom and Gomorrah. And when we talk about the wealth of Sodom and Gomorrah, there was wealth. These were the wealth capitals of the world. 
and all of their food. They, they invaded their uh, Ralphs and their A&Ps. And they went. Verse 2, in addition to all of this, what interests us is that they also kidnapped Lot. And his wealth. Who was Lot? Lot is the nephew. Ben Achi Avram. Lot is the son of Abraham's brother. Remember, we learned that Abraham had two brothers. One was Nochor, and the other was Horon. Horon was Lot's father. Vayelechu, and they left. Who Yeshib is Dom, because at that time Lot was living in Sodom. And remember when we learned, I think yesterday, that Abraham said to Lot, We have to separate. I'm not going to go too far, said Abraham. I'll always be there to assist you. You can always call. 911, I'll be there. Text me. And that's exactly what happened. So now Abraham is facing the fact that he got a message that Lot's in trouble. <laughs> Lot's in trouble. Go stand up against four invading superpowers. Abraham didn't hesitate. And that's the story here. Verse 12, Ahu Yeshib is dame. Why did Lot get into trouble? Because Lot decided to move to Sodom. Me Godam Lezes, who caused this? What caused this? Ishivasib is dame. The fact that he decided to settle into Sodom. He could have settled into a better neighborhood. But remember, he went to Sodom because that's where the action was. Because there was opportunity there. Because there was money there. Because there was good times. Like they say, uh, I think they said to Jesse James, why do you rob banks? He says, because that's where the money is. What should I rob? <laughs> Pushkas. 13, by Yovoy Hapolit. So, the one escapee came, the refugee came. There was one guy that got away from the war, and he came, by Yagid Lavroham Ivri, and he reported to Avroham, who was called Avroham Ivri. Avram is called Ivri, as Rashi says, and the simple meaning, because Abraham came across, from across the river. Abraham was a, a greenhorn. He, he, he was an immigrant. He came from Mesopotamia. He came from ur Kazdim. He came from Iraq. So he was an Iraqi immigrant. That's why they called him from over the river. But that's also where the word Ivri came from, which is Jewish, Hebrew. Ivrit. The who at that time he, Abraham, Avram Avinu, Shechem dwelled, Be'eloine Mamre Ho Amori, in the plains of Mamre the Amorite. This Mamre was Achi Eshkol, Achi Oner. He was the brother, meaning the ally of Eshkel and Oner. There were three powerful allies in that neighborhood, and they were Oner, Eshkel, and Mamre like Manny, Mo, and Jack. And these Oner, Eshkel, and Mamre were Vehem, Bali, Bris, Avram. They were allies and friends of Abraham. Verse 13, Rashi, Bayovay, Ha-Polit. We just learned in the Rashi earlier, Ha-Polit. If it would say Vayovay, Polit, it means a guy escaped. Vayovay, Ha-Polit, the famous refugee. The Pipshute, therefore Rashi says, the only simple interpretation, who is the famous one? Ze'og. This is Og, who later was the king of Bashan. Og was one of these giants, or a descendant of one of these giants from the angels who fell from heaven, and they lived many, many years. They were half angel, half human. They were very decadent, very powerful, bad guys. This was Og. He was a descendant of the giants. Of the Nephilim, Shepolag min Amalchama, who escaped the war, Behu Shekosov. This is the same Og, where the verse says, Kirak Og, Nishar, only Og was left, Miyeser Harfoyim, of the rest of the giants. So he came from San Francisco. Vizeu Nishar, that's what it means, remained. Shelei Haraguhu Amrofel Vachaber, of Amrofel and his buddies were unable to kill Og, Kishihiku, when they beat and killed and slew. Harfoyim, the giants, Ashtoris Karnoyim. Now Rashi brings down a second interpretation, and the Rebbe, in his commentary on Rashi, the Rebbe devoted his life to explaining many, many teachings in Torah. One of his favorites was Rashi. 
The Rebbe spent one segment of every Fabrengen since 1964 explaining one Rashi. If there was a Shabbos Fabrengen, he always talked about a Rashi. So the Rebbe explained the rules of Rashi, that whenever Rashi gives us a second interpretation, it's because the first interpretation is lacking. But the second interpretation is lacking even more. That's why it's second. You need both of them, or sometimes three of them, in order for us to understand the simple interpretation. So here we're forced to apply a medrash, even though medrash is never Rashi's first choice, because Rashi likes the simple interpretation. But the medrash here says that, oh, that this is the same og, Shepolat Midir Hamabul, who escaped the flood. Medra says that Og Melech Haboshon hung on to the ark, survived the flood, even though he got some chemical burns and he was treated in the Sherman Oaks Hospital. Vizel Meyeser Harfoim, he was the remnants of the giants. Shenemar Hanefilum Hoyu Ba'oretz, the giants who were on earth. What was Og's intention? Og wanted to get the girl. Og fell in love with Sarah, and he figured if he gets Abraham to go fight the four invading superpowers, Abraham will get killed, and he'll be able to marry Sarah. That's what it's about. Ha'ivri Shabom Eved Anor, who came from across the river. Again, to quickly share a talk of the Rebbe here on, on, on this Rashi, where, where the Rebbe points out that if you look in the Medrash, the Medrash says that when Og came to Abraham, to Avram, and he told Avram, hey, this is what's going on. Lot was kidnapped. He found Avram, Og Miloshin Uga. Avram was sitting and eating matzah, because it was Pesach. And Avram, being a prophet, knew that Pesach would come, so already he ate matzah. So the Rebbe says, very nice, but who cares? Why do we need to know that Avram was sitting and eating matzah? What does that contribute to the story? So the Rebbe explains it contributes a lot because Og was looking for a plan to get rid of Abraham so he can marry Sarah. He comes and he sees Abraham eating matzah. He says, aha, this man is a man of faith. This man believes in the supernatural. Therefore, he's going to have enough faith. This Michigan is going to believe that he can actually conquer four kings. And then I'll marry Sarah. Little did he know that he would succeed. That's why the Medrash brings down the story with the matzah. Eating the matzah gave old confidence that this would be his sales pitch and that Abraham would have enough faith to go. Ha'ivri shabam evranari came across the river. Bali bris avram shakosu bris. What does it mean, bali bris? They were allies. They entered into covenant. 14, vayishma avram, when avram heard kinishba achiv, that his kinfolk, that his relative, his bro, was kidnapped. By Yorak Yeshanicha, he led forth his trained army, Yili de Bese, those born and raised in his house. How many members of Abraham's private army were there? Shmeina, Osar, Ushleish, Meis, 318. Chaitzim Levin. By Yidef Adon, and he pursued these kings all the way to Don. By Yorak Grammar, Kitagoma Vizores, he armed, Chaim Varikesi. Draw out. Actually, it says, and again, Rashi brings down a medrash, that Eliezer, this refers to one Rambo-type soldier who was Abraham's trusted chief of staff, Eliezer. He was the super guy. He won the war. That he trained him for mitzvahs because Eliezer was trained by Abraham. Eliezer was a very spiritual man, albeit a Canaanite. The training, that's what it means. So Chanicho is his trained, trusted person, Eliezer. That the guy who really won the war was Eliezer. And 318 is the numerical value of the name Eliezer. And again, the Rebbe has a talk on this, and the Rebbe says 
that if the Torah says there was 318, there was 318. If the Torah says, Rashi says it was Eliezer, it was Eliezer. So in the simple interpretation, what Rashi is telling us is there were 318 people, but the main thrust of this success was Eliezer, who was an amazing soldier. Adon, what's the significance of the fact that Abraham pursued these kings? To Don, what's, why would the Torah tell us this? Is a very important reason. Futuristically, Shom Tashash Kechei, because there is when his strength waned. Sherosh Asid, the of the Hamid Shom Egel, because he saw that it was within the territory of Don that his descendants, the Jewish people, would put up a cap and they would worship it during the time, the idolatrous times of the kingdom of Israel. 15, Vayacholak Aleim Halayla, I'm sorry. Who va'avodov and he split the night he and his servants va'yakem and he smote them va'yidafem and pursued them out chayva until chayva Hashem esmelo damesek to the left of Damascus va'yacholak aleim lefipshutei saras hamikra the simple meaning is va'yacholak who va'avodav aleim alayla that he divided himself and his servants against them at night kederach haraytim Hashem espalgam achanadachim as people pursue in a war where they split kishaberchan zelikam zelikan they made like a Y. Laila Klamer Achash Koshka, even after dark. Lainim Namalot from he didn't hesitate to pursue them. Medrash Hagodah Shenech Kalayla, the Medrash says that the night of miracles was split. The Chetzi Arish and Nasa Lainais, the first half a night. Abraham experienced a tremendous miracle here, a supernatural victory. The Chetzi Hashani, but the second half of the night was reserved for Nishmar of Volay the Chetzis. Laila Shamitzrim, this became Shamitzrim. The midnight miracle of the plague of the firstborn in Egypt. That's why the plague of the firstborn began at midnight. This was Abraham's second half of the night of miracles. He reserved it for later. Ad Cheva says, Rashi, we search Google Maps. Ein Mokam Shishmai Cheva. There's no such place named Chova. The Don Kere Chova. But Don is called Chova because Chova means guilt. Al Shem Ave Dezora. Shasid Eliasham. Because of the worshiping of idols that would take place there, so it created a chova, created a negative merit, so to speak, for the Jewish people. Seven, sixteen. So here, miraculously, Avraham Avinu Abraham wins the war against four powerful armies. He returned back all of the goods, Vigamas, late Achiv, and also Lot, his relative. Or and his wealth, he should be returned. Vegamas Hanoshim, also the women, Vesam and the people. The king of Zdom came out towards Abraham. After Abraham returned, Mehakis from beating, as Kedar Laimer. Kedar Laimer, some Lachem Ashiriti and the kings that were with him. He came out, El Emek Shove, to the valley of Shove, which is also the same as Emek Hamelech, the valley of kings. Emek Shove, Rashi Kachme, that's what it was called. Kitagome, Lemeshar, Mapna, an open plain, Ponime alone is clear of trees, when we call Michel and every obstacle, Emek Hamelech, Basilis, the Malka, the king's arena, Basilis, Echad, Shushleshim, Konim, one arena which was 30 reeds, 30 rods long, it was like a stadium. Shemiyuchad, Lamelech, Tzach, Sham, the king would have sport there. Omedish Agada, Emek, Shushmu, Sham, Kolo, Umas, what is Emek? The place, the valley where all nations became agreeable. They all proclaimed and crowned Abraham king over them. As a prince of Hashem, or the Kotzin, and as a leader, Abraham became the recognized leader of the civilized world. The Torah now reminds us that Avram Avinu, Abraham, knew that when you have a success, you have to thank God. How do you thank God? By giving charity. Who was the spiritual leader of that time? The spiritual leader of that time was still Shem, the son of Noah, who was a great spiritualist and a great Kabbalist. And later it says that uh, Yitzchok, Yaakov, they studied in the yeshiva of Shem and Eva. Malki Tzedek Melech Sholem, the righteous king of Sholem. See, the word Jerusalem, Yerushalayim, is never mentioned in the Torah. One, sometimes it's mentioned as Yira, and another place it's mentioned as Sholem. Together, Yira, Sholem is Yerushalayim. 
So Malki Tzedek, the righteous king, Melech Sholem, is Jerusalem. Hetzi, he brought forth lechem bayoyin, bread and wine, as you do when somebody returns from war. The who and this Malki Tzedek, Kohen, acted as a priest, a Kohen, lekel Elyon to God Almighty. Malki Tzedek, Rashi brings down the Medrash, Hushem ben Noach, that the Gemara says in the Agadata section of the Gemara, that this refers to Shem, who was the son of Noach. The uh, Balaturim points out, Malki Tzedek, Melech Sholem. Look at the two words, Melech Sholem. Look at the first letter of those two words, backwards, Shem. Melech, Sholem is Mem Shin, Shin Mem is Shem. That's, his name is alluded in these words. Lechem bayoyin, kach esim liigiyam mechama. That's what people do. When people return exhausted from a war, v'hedole, he showed him, shem b'li b'yolav, that he doesn't harbor any resentment, al shahara gazbonav, that he killed his sons, because many of these kings were descendant of shame. Medesh agod, ramazle, he alluded to him, al menach hazvanasachem, to the offerings of meal offerings and wine libations, shekiv upsham bonav, that his children would ultimately bring in Jerusalem on the Temple Mount. Because this was the area of the Temple Mount. 19, by Yevarcheyu, and he blessed him. By Yevarcheyu, he blessed him by Yomar, and he said, Boruch Avram, blessed be Abraham. Or Avram, lekel elyein, to God on Most High. Kone, the maker, the creator of Shamayim Ba'aretz, of heaven and earth. This was the bracha, the blessing that Shem gave Avram. Kene Shamayim Ba'aretz, kemei Eisah Shamayim Ba'aretz, maker of heaven and earth. And through making them, he acquired them. 20. And blessed be God on high, who has delivered your enemies into your hands. And Abraham, Avram Avinu gave Shem, Maser, a tithing, 10%, Mikhail, from all the goods. Asher Migen, Asher Hizgir. And we were kids in Cheder. We said, how do you know that Abraham was Hungarian? Because it says here, Migen, Igen, Migen, Chabdefligen. Ma'yitan lo'y Avroham, Abraham gave him Maser, a tithe, Mikhail, from everything, Asher lo'y that he had, Lefishu Kayan, because he was a Kayan. Just very quickly before we conclude here, there's a very interesting Balaturim, despite the fact that it's late, I don't want to pass up on it. On 19, Boruch Avraham, Lekel Elyon, says the Balaturim. There are seven verses in the Torah where you have blessing to God. <clears throat> Boruch Hashem Alekei Shem, Boruch Kel Elyon, Boruch Hashem Alekei Adoni Avraham, Vo'ekeid Vishtach Vel Hashem, Va'avorech, Va'yemer Yisrei Boruch Hashem, Vi'achalta V'savoto V'erachto, Ulegod Omar Boruch. Those are the seven verses of Baruch Hashem. And they, there are, within these seven blessings, a total of 100 words, which teach us that every day we have to recite 100 blessings to Hashem. Every Jew is obligated, every Jew is obligated to make 100 blessings every day. If you do your daily prayers, and you're not anorexic, you don't have a big problem doing it because there are 19 brachas just in the Shemon Esrei, times three and a lot more. So this corresponds to the 100 blessings every day, and the seven verses corresponding to the seven blessings in the Amidah on Shabbat and Chagim. Five of them have the name Hashem next to Baruch, those five correspond to the five books of the Chamoshim, where we have to make a bracha when we read. And if you add Baruch Kel Elyon, it becomes not five, but six, corresponding to the six books of the Mishnah. End of Chumash portion.